Alta Company presents. I've lived with diabetes for 16 years. 21, 13, 23. 425 million people are living with diabetes in the world today. Diabetes is unpredictable, insidious, and surrounded by myths and prejudice. It is often described as a verdict. Diabetes is a serious diagnosis. We're not here to complain, just to show how hard it can be. We show what really happens in a life with diabetes. The Diet Challenge project began in 2018. Its participants will have to demonstrate what it means to take action and not to be afraid. To seriously change many aspects of your life. A six month transformation process. Five seconds, four, three, come on! Regular workouts. Sugar and emotional control. Daily activity reports. It's all about practice and repetition. This is what I need, this is what I've been waiting for. Real solutions. It's truly hard. You want to live. Therefore, you battle with yourself. Real Victories, Diet Challenge, a reality project about people's lives with diabetes. We challenged ourselves, have you? Last week, one of Diet Challenge participants left the show. Kirill, thank you for being with us. Nasta Murtanyuk received a warning. Nasta, you have also been put on probation for a week. I truly feel bad for Kirill. We were in a taxi and we were all very emotionally overwhelmed after Kirill left the show. I said it should have been like that from the start. Thank God Dima was sitting in front, so I could not reach him. He said, who cares that he didn't do anything, he was weak. I was furious after such a statement. I wanted to say to him, what are you talking about? You must take care of yourself. I really wanted to hit him. So, Ola, Dima, what's the word? How was your week? This week was excellent. Do you have any questions for me at this time? Yes, about my naughty sugar. If my level is at 12 and I inject two units, then an hour, an hour and a half later, I check again. Best case scenario, I'll still have the 12, maybe 13. So I inject another 4, and again an hour later, I still have the 12. When will this bugger drop? When you're at 12, you can inject more than 2 in your case. Not like before though. How much did you used to do? 7. Okay, so with 12, you can try 3 to 4. But not at night. As it turns out, I also have to check my blood sugar at night. Not always, but there are times when it's necessary. I finally knew what I was doing it for. I beg of you, if your sugars are at 12 before you go to bed and you make an injection, set your alarm clock to check again later. You're not an option. I'm way out of it the next day. Why is it so hard? Check your sugars and go back to sleep. It's not hard, I just won't be able to work after. You can't fall asleep after? Just the opposite, I'll sleep all day. Cause you woke up for five minutes? Yes. You have to try, we just have to work out and understand the sensitivity, what coefficient we should use to lower, otherwise we will always have to guess and not know what is happening. I found out that there are still things that I don't get even with such a history of diabetes. Dmitry Shrevkunov is 42, his diabetes is 27. He was diagnosed back in 1991, however, Dmitry still has a hard time coping with the disease. I still can't get used to the fact that I have diabetes. I remember a time when I was diabetes free and everything was great. I've met people with diabetes that say that there's a life before diabetes and after diabetes. I don't know a life without diabetes. It's probably for the best, since when you live without diabetes, you know you can do anything. You can eat or drink whenever you want to, you don't need to check your blood every time, you don't need injections in the stomach, 
A lot depends on the person who will take up their health at the initial stage. In my case, I was told right away that this is a sentence. Forget about sports, forget about a normal life. Get ready to make injections and be at the hospital six months out of the year. I was lucky that my hospital roommate was a boxer. He told me not to listen to anybody and that everything would be okay. He said, you'll check your sugars, watch your health and eat what you want, but we'll have to inject insulin accordingly. You will feel wonderful. You will not have depression or any negative emotions towards diabetes. After our conversation, I was set to make an effort, to live as is, that is all. Then I discovered all the benefits of diabetes. In my case, insulin works like an anabolic agent when I work out. It helps me gain muscle mass if used correctly. In addition, the diabetes diet is very similar to a sport diet, in terms of counting carbs, proteins and fats. So it would be wrong to say that diabetes is a sentence. It's not. I met wonderful people that took care of themselves since childhood. There was a nurse that had diabetes since she was two. At the time she was probably 21, 22 years of age. And I could see she was happy. Her eyes were on fire, she had no complications. She lived a full-fledged life and showed us kids at the hospital how to make injections and to live with it. She became my idol. I realized that there is nothing to be afraid of and that I would be just like her. I was in shock. Shortly after my diagnosis, I had a syringe that had to be boiled. Not only was it huge, but it also had such a blunt needle that I could barely shoot it into my leg. Years went by. The blunt needles were replaced with insulin pens. Pumps became available along with better quality insulin. The only thing that didn't change was Dmitri's attitude towards diabetes. The only question that remained in his head was, what did I do to deserve this? Diabetes is like a weight that hangs over you. In fact, there are times when you have to focus on something important, like work-related, but you still need to think about your sugars and your brain just explodes. There are a bunch of checks, but some things do come up. Wrong time for insulin. Forgot to write it down. It seems like no big deal, but it makes it harder for me to conclude certain things. Do you understand? And every time he tells me, Anastasia, I get it, I hear you, but I've lived like this for 20 years. Dmitri, what are we going to do from now on again? Keeping a pause. How long? 30 minutes. No, it depends on your initial sugars. I wouldn't keep a pause if the sugars were at 3. What about at 5? I'll keep a pause. How long? Like 20 minutes? No, you should have asked me about the type of food. Because I could tell you that we're having a steak in the morning. Dima, look. Let's take your breakfast. A sandwich, some tea with honey. First of all, I recommend you don't drink tea with honey. No need if your sugar is okay. And there's no need for sweet tea at all. At least I think so. Without changing your habits, you won't get away from sugar spikes. No insulin will help you. If your initial sugar is 5, you should have had the sandwich and tea without honey. Do you want to live? Why have sugar at 15 after half an hour? You will have high sugar just 15 minutes later. If you want to have a sweet drink, inject insulin, take a 30-minute pause and have your drink. Otherwise, you will not be able to avoid this peak. That's why I told Dmitri to ask me about the breakfast when his sugar is 5. And if your breakfast is as it is, then minimum of half an hour. That's why I want you to convince Ola that sometimes you need the half an hour. Please convince her that you need the half an hour pause. We know that if you do not keep the half an hour pause, you will get a spike, as you always do. Or maybe you will have something else. For example, go over to Ola's place and have breakfast there. What does Ola have for breakfast? I love oatmeal with banana. Five to six bread units. What about the fats and the proteins? If there's cottage cheese, yes. How long is your pause? If the sugar is 3.9, then 15 minutes. She almost always has 3.9 in the morning. Of course she can take a 15-minute pause. In fact, she will absolutely do it. You, on the other hand, with that reading, would be eating a long time ago while screaming, if I don't eat something right now, I will have hypo and die. 
Both hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia are bad. But what is worse is Dmitry's constant fluctuations and no stability. That's the exact situation that leads to complications. If you need help, help yourself. We're simply people that are here to point you in the right direction. You should not rely on us to get you to your goal. The goal that Dmitry has set for himself when he came on the project was to gain weight. After a month and a half of work on the project, he realized that the problems in his relationship with diabetes are not only external, but also internal, many of which took root in childhood. Initially, when I was diagnosed, I had a bunch of friends. I was 15. Then, all of a sudden, there were less friends around. I was getting invited to hang out less and less. And then, all of a sudden, I realized I was practically alone. There are a lot of examples of negative attitude towards children with diabetes in our society. Especially when it comes to insulin injections. People brand them as druggies, taking the syringes from them and calling them names, especially among teens. There are many stories and cases when families are broken up due to the child's condition, when the father or the mother remove themselves from a relationship with the child. I think it was such a shock, a blow to my mother. And taking into consideration the fact that there was very little information on the disease, my mom just told me not to inject insulin and to do without it. Of course I tried and realized that I feel ill that I could not live without it. We constantly fought and argued. After three years of this constant battle, I knew I had to move out. The car is ready and I have the keys. When leaving your home, you must feel at ease. I've been working with diabetes for the past six years and know of many such stories. When the parents are in need of psychological or psychotherapeutic help due to their child diagnosis. My mother and I are very close now. We found common ground. I understand that she didn't mean it and she had no ill intentions. What emotion are you working on? At first, I worked on happiness and rage. In general, I'm in a state of indifference, zero emotions, neither positive nor negative, just detached. Empty? Yes. When there is an emotional trauma, there are closed-off regions that are very difficult to control, and a person avoids them in his life, does not touch them, as they can be very uncomfortable. This is why a part of our work that we are doing has to do with uncovering these trauma material in order to bring down the amount of emotional strain. Prior to him being on the Diet Challenge project, Dmitry has never consulted a psychologist. He has never heard of emotional strain, didn't know that it could affect his life. When it came to society, he preferred to close himself off as a defense mechanism. He never talked about his condition, especially when looking for a job. It seems like in our society, a sick man is thought of as a defective man. Even if I was accepted with my condition, I would have a hard time admitting it. I would feel handicapped in front of others. For some reason, it is common to write diabetics off. If you have joint pain, they just say, you've had diabetes for 15 years, from what do you expect? Same with everything else. 
Even if it has nothing to do with diabetes, well, what did you expect? I'm on permanent disability, but nobody knows about it at my job. I never mention it at an interview. Everybody is healthy, and so am I. I can do everything they can. In regards to this question, I'm very tough. I don't feel sorry for diabetics. I don't see a reason to feel sorry. If they have complications with their kidneys or eyes, that is very scary. But it's their own fault they got to that point. The path that we will walk together with the Project's heroes will perhaps help the people that watch the show. Help them better understand how to move forward and in which direction. I began to watch my health when I started a family, my wife and kids. I knew that I was needed and that people depended on me. I must take care of myself. I met my wife at a bus stop in Ivanova, the city of brides. <laughs> and we've been together for the last 13 years. I don't have any regrets. Life happens, of course. His personality is difficult, but that's okay. I think I told her that I had diabetes on her first date. Natasha did not know anything about it. She did not understand what it was. I had a hypo episode on the day of our wedding. Nobody knew what was happening and what to do with me. Natasha's friend decided to call an ambulance. The doctors injected me with glucose. Yeah, that was our wedding night. I even had people ask me what I was thinking getting involved with a sick man, telling me what a huge responsibility I was taking on. I just said it was my business of whom I got involved with. It means I am ready to take it on, together, and get through it. Okay, 2.4. Did you overdo it? Five units. But I didn't have any carbs. I only ate meat and tomatoes. I injected extra for good measure. During the project, measuring blood sugar became a habit for Dmitri that he did not have before. Glucose meter showed 2.4, hypoglycemia. Now Dmitri is trying to figure out what went wrong. And just a month ago, he would not even have paid attention. I am used to hypos. It would often happen this way. Natasha would tell me that I'm having a hypo, and I would say, that's impossible, I feel fine. She would tell me to measure my blood sugar, and indeed, I was having a hypo. That was in terms of your family. But what about strangers? Let's say you were walking and fell down. How would a passerby know that you have diabetes? How could they help you? You can always wear a bracelet, but who would read what is written on it? They'll read that you have diabetes. Then what? They wouldn't know what to do. Once I was in the subway testing my sugar. I'm not shy about it. There was a man sitting across from me staring. I thought, okay, he's curious. I put my stuff away and he takes out a banana and hands it to me. Here, he says, to raise your sugar. He just knew. There are not a lot of people like that. Many people are confused, asking me a bunch of times if I have hypoglycemia and low sugar. Do you need another injection? Yes. Many think that if your sugar is low, you need an injection. If your sugar is high, you need to eat something. It's the complete opposite. Yes, that's the problem. So you fell down, the people see your diabetic bracelet, went into your bag and gave you an injection. I've never heard of such cases, but that is a scary thought. I've had a couple of instances. I don't usually fall down when I'm having hypo. I have a borderline state where I can feel that I'm not doing well. Therefore, I always have sugar, or juice, or chocolate with me. I quickly eat it and everything is fine. But I have had those times at the gym, in school, or just walking down a street, where I knew that I was about to have a hypo. I begin to shake. I go into my bag and realize that I have nothing on me. What do you do then? My hands are shaking. Even I have money with me, it doesn't mean I'll have enough time to get to a store.
I had a hyperglycemia on a train. I was on the train and I didn't have anything with me. There were people on the train and they were eating something. And I asked them for food. Dima, how did they react to you asking for food? Puzzled faces, but I don't ask for food on the train every day. The fact is that this is not the case to be afraid of coming off weird. This is a question of life and death. If you need it, then go and ask everybody. It doesn't matter. The 10th or the 15th person will have something and they will share it with you. So you only had one case of hypo on Friday? Yes. Just the one then, right? Just the one. The whole week was wonderful. 3.4. Let's think about how this happened. Sugar was 6.1 at 7 p.m. Yes, I counted something wrong. I thought about it after, why it dropped. 11 bread units. I think I made the dumplings according to the fact secret. They weighed less. They weighed less? Yes, it gave me some unreal number. That's too much, I think. I'm just sitting here and thinking. How many dumplings would you have to eat to get to 11 bread units, considering your sensitivity? Yeah, that's a lot. What were the dumplings? The no-hurry dumplings. First of all, they were in a hurry. You had them and didn't keep a pause. He was hit by a wave. His after-meal sugar was way high and he got hit hard. That's the first thing, that was obvious. And secondly, fact secret, that's good and all, but when you're buying dumplings or any other ready product, the ingredients are clearly written on the package. You can also scan the barcode and it will tell you the ingredients. Really? Yes! The raw and the cooked will have different amounts of calories, proteins, fats and carbohydrates. Dumplings too? Everything. Did you weigh the cooked ones? Of course. The cooked ones are full of water. You made a wrong injection and went into hypo. Do you get the most important thing? You must count everything in its raw state. Anastasia promised to talk to Natasha and convince her to count. Well, not so much to convince. She will just expand on how to do it properly. I have never ran into anything like this. She will just teach me how to do it. It's not just good for me, but for you as well. Here's the vital assignment for you two. Start a cook journal for Dmitri. Enter in some main dishes in there. Soups. It's not always clear what you add to it. Oatmeal? Dima is actually doing very well. He deserves a praise from where he is now in comparison to where he was before. I almost never have hypoglycemia anymore that I used to have all the time. I had a talk with Dima yesterday. It's been a month and a half and this is his first week without hypoglycemia. I congratulated him and asked him how his head was feeling. He said it felt clear. Dima, you started using an insulin pump. Tell us about your first impressions on the topic. The pump for me is an opportunity to try a different way of my diabetes compensation. Beside my insulin pen. It is easier to compensate with a pump, but you need a good teacher to get the hang of it. And most importantly, you need practice. And, of course, time. There is a program in Russia where they supply diabetics with free pumps. You must ask your doctor about a free pump. Get a referral from the doctor for hospitalization. As far as I know, this program exists in Kirov, Moscow, Ufa, St. Petersburg, many cities. You do not need to be on disability to get a pump. Any person diagnosed with diabetes is able to get a pump. Only adults can get it in Kirov. Dina, we're not talking about Kirov, we're talking about the possibilities. Okay, sure, there's a possibility of an adult getting a pump, but for a child you will wait for a year. There are opportunities, but you have to wait everywhere. 
What about the people that save money? What's the average cost of a pump? $1,500. $1,500? The pump that you get in Kirov is about $2,000. I have another question. Mainly girls talk about it, but the question is for all of you. How does it feel having something attached to you all the time? In this case, it's the pump. It's all about your perception. It's uncomfortable. I also find it uncomfortable because I just started doing yoga. Some moves are difficult. If you touch the mat with your cannula, you'll definitely feel it. Here's a question. Does anybody find it comfortable? Of course it's annoying, but it's all about the advantages that you get with the pump. Even surfing feels fine. It all depends on the person. One time I ripped it off by grabbing the cupboard with the tube. After that, I was more careful. It's important to remember. Yes, the cupboard is classic. My baby began to tug on the tube, trying to take it out. Yeah, can't walk around in the nude. That's not true. Okay, so where do you stick it if you're naked? On your tail. You mean on your hair? Not everybody has such strong hair. When I had a long... On your hair, I never even thought. When I had a long catheter, I would attach it to my hair. Now I have a short catheter, 60 centimeters. I hang it on a chain. <laughs> Me and Olya are like in shock. I would have never thought of that. Hey guys, how was your day? Busy. My head is full informative and productive and we had fun today is the last day of Anastasia's probation week and she has pleasantly surprised me this week I gave it the whole hundred percent I tried to understand and analyze everything that was going on I began to try even harder and do even more because I knew how important this project is for me and how much I need it Nasta, you're amazing. Good for you. Keep it up. That's great. The majority of the participants finally got into the transformation work. Not everybody got it right away, with different levels of intensity. Overall, everybody is hitting their stride and moving at a good pace. There are quite significant achievements here. It is now understood that in order to gain results, systematic hard work is necessary. This is Diet Challenge. See you in a week.